Hi and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create this really professional infographic in Word. So let's open a new document. So the first thing we need to do is to change this page to landscape. So go to layout, orientation, landscape. Then we're going to insert our first graphic. So go to insert, shapes, then go down to this shape here. Then just click, hold down your shift key and drag out that shape. Now the reason you hold down the shift key is because otherwise you would distort this from a square shape and it will become an oval or a rectangular shape like this. So make sure you hold down that shift key. Then we're simply going to rotate it so that it is 136 degrees and if you can't get it quite accurate just select it go to rotate, go to more options and make sure you go down to 136 degrees and click OK. Then we want to make it the correct size. So for this demonstration, go up to this section here. This is in shape format. If this doesn't pop up, it's because you haven't selected your shape. And just go up to the top here and I'm going to select 3.57. Make sure this is checked here. And then when you press enter, it will change this one here so it's a perfect square again. Then for this one, I'm going to take off the borderline. You can't really see it very well, but there is a borderline to this shape. So again, make sure on shape format, go to this icon here and select no outline. Then I'm simply going to go up to insert again, go to shapes, go to the rounded rectangle. Again, click and draw out a shape. Then with this little yellow square, just click and pull it to the right, which will give you the perfect oval shape at the top and bottom. Once again, up to the top to take the outline off. And then again, making sure this is the correct size. So for this one, I'm going to go back up to the top here. And my height is going to be 10.76. And my width here is going to be 3.81 and then just press enter. Now we've got these new shapes we can now just place them roughly where we want to and then we can select them both holding down the command or control key to select multiple shapes. Go to a line and select a line to center then we can select our color range so select a shape go to shape fill select from any color if you can't see the colour of your choice, go to more fill colours. Here you have a colour wheel. You can lighten and darken the shape. And you can also move this little round circle anywhere you like. Try to keep to a decent colour palette. You can find hundreds of different colour palettes online. You can select from those. If you're fortunate enough to have the eyedropper tool, you can use that to select from your palettes as well. Again, completely up to you. So I've chosen all of my colors in my recent colors. So I'm going to select this blue color and this shape here, I'm actually going to choose a gradient. To do that, go to shape format, go all the way over to format pane. In this bucket icon here, go down to the fill icon and select the drop down. Select gradient fill. And then here you can see we've got two sliders, which as you can see on my picture will affect that color. All you need to do is select one of these and go to color. Select your color. I'm going to select a slightly darker blue. And then select the other one. I'm going to select a lighter blue. Then you can change direction, choose from linear, radial, etc. And you can also use this to change the gradient if you want to. Next, I'm going to go to effects and create a shadow. Click on the drop down and go to presets. And here I'm going to choose an inner shadow and you can see my shadows here and then I can affect the distance or the blur. I'm going to take the blur right down and then the distance here you can see as I pull that to the right that shadow changes. So I note down that I've got my blur at two points and my distance at nine points. So I can go to the top one. I can replicate that, choose the inner shadow we can take this down to two and take this up to nine. Press enter. 
You can see that shadow is the wrong size, so all you need to do is change the angle. And as you can see here, an angle of 70 degrees. Then we can choose an icon disc, go to insert, shapes, go to the circle, click and drag to circle, holding down that shift key again to make a perfect circle. Again, let's take off the outline. Shape fill, we're going back over to a gradient. This time I'm going to use a white and a gray. So I'm going to select the white for this one, gray for this one. I'm going to select radial and then you can see I want the white on the middle. Go to direction, choose the center one and I want the white in the middle so I'm just going to swap these around. So you've got a slightly darker gray on the outside you can see here. And then I'm going to go to effects again. This time I'm going to go to 3D format. I'm going to choose the top bevel and just the first one. And that will give you the shadow here on that beveled edge. Again, you can use the customization tools to choose how you want to customize it. And then we can just move that inside here to the center. We can select them both holding down that command or control key. But unfortunately, if you align to center, then it won't do it because the original shape has actually been turned around and it will align them to the square parts. So this one you can do pretty much by eye using the arrow keys left and right. For this one, I want 2.77. Make sure it's checked and press enter. Then using these arrow keys, we can just move this to the center. Then I'm going to go to insert text box, draw text box, click and draw out the text box. Now with the text box, it will come with a black borderline and a white fill color. I'm going to get rid of both of those. Go up to here, no outline and shape fill. We're simply going to select no fill. And then in your text box, you can see your cursor. You just begin to type. I'm going to paste in some text because I'm sure you don't want to watch me type. But this text, if I go to the home tab, this is the font I've used and it's font size 12. And the title at the top here is 18. Again, we can put this in the middle by selecting both items. Go to shape format, go to align, align to center, align, align to middle. If you're not happy with that, you can almost always use your arrows just to correct it if you want to move it down. Again, totally your choice. Then inside here, I'm going to put an icon, but I'm going to wait to do that because each of my icons is going to be slightly different. So I'm going to do that right at the end. What I will do now is group everything together. So hold down your command and control key, click on all of your items, go to group and select group. And then all we're going to do is hold down the alter option key, click and drag to copy, do that again, deselect both of these, reselect one of them and again, copy the final one. Now you need to decide how close to the edge you want this one here and this one here. I'm going to choose this sort of distance. Then I'm going to select them all like we did before, holding down that command or control key. I'm going to go to align, distribute horizontally. So it's an equal distance between all of these images and then align, align to top. Now you need to go and customize each one of these. So all I'm going to do is go through and then ungroup each one. And then select the top graphic go to shape fill, select my next color, which will be the dark purple. And again, select this box, go back up to gradient fill and select the colors of my choosing. Now you know how to do it. I'm just going to speed up the video while I do the remainder. And then I'm going to come back, show you how to put the icons in and how to do the background. Okay, so now those are complete. We're going to go to insert icons. Now you can use any icons you like. They can be off the internet. They can be through your own files, or you can simply scroll down here and choose a bunch of icons, or you can use the search bar at the top here. It's completely up to you. I've used completely random uh, icons. I'm going to select this one here and click insert. You can see it's gone behind my graphics. So I'm going to select it, 
go to wrap text and select in front of text. Now I can move it and resize it. Now, if this happens where you end up moving something you didn't mean to, just go back one step by Command or Control Z. Make sure I've got this selected. I can move it with my arrows because sometimes when you do click on it, you will start to click on other features you've inserted. And again, if you want to change the size, you can either resize with the corners like this and then move it with your arrow keys. Or of course, you can go to graphics format and adjust the size over here. Totally your choice. Once again, you can select the graphic and then you can select the white disc. Sometimes it's really hard to do this. So sometimes what you will need to do is go to the graphics format tab and go to the selection pane. All the way down here, you can see these eyeballs. If you click on and off these, it will show you what you're selecting. And you do have to go through and select the different ones. Once you've selected them, select this one, and then you'll have to go through and find the oval shape. That's that one there. Let's go to the bottom. There we go. And select that one by holding down the command and control key. You've now selected them both, as you can see here. Go to align, align to center, align to middle. They're now perfectly lined up. So now you know how to do that, all I'm going to do is speed up the video and insert the rest of my icons and come back and show you how to put the background in. So once you're happy, just select anything, go to graphics format and go to the selection pane. Click on the top one, scroll down to the bottom, hold down your shift key, click on the bottom one and now you can see everything is selected. Go to group, select group, and then go to align, align to center, that's now aligned to the center of your page, align to middle. Now bear in mind, I haven't changed any of the text. Obviously, you'll be going through and changing each of these text boxes in the exact same way that you made them in the first place. To ungroup everything, you just need to simply click on it, go to graphics, format, go to group, and select the ungroup tab here. I'm gonna leave it as it is, I'm quite happy with that. Next and finally, I'm going to put in the background. Go to insert, shapes, click on the square, click and draw out a rectangle that will cover your page. Then go over to format shape, go to gradient fill, and here you can really go to tan and whatever gradient you want. You can use the radial gradient if you want to. I find that white and gray goes really well as a background. Or you can go to the linear. You can change the direction. I tend to go for this top to bottom. And again, you can move the gray one over if you want more of a darker effect. Now all you need to do is to go to the top here, select center backwards, center back. And there you have your background. Once you've completed all this, you can save it as a Word document, you can save it as a PDF, or you can save it as a JPEG. Now what you can do is you can select just this infographic here, right click and go down to save as picture, and then you can save this as a picture, as a PNG file. Now what this will mean is that you don't have that background. You can use the infographic any way you like, but you won't have this background. If you want to have the background included, you will have to group it together with this infographic and again, save that. But you must make sure that the background is perfectly centered to your infographic. If it's not, you're going to have this infographic slightly off-centered. If you can't be bothered to make this infographic, I will leave a link in the description below where you can download it. So I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please like and subscribe and have a great day.